Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. And welcome to week um, 16 of the of our ordinary time. And I guess I should say welcome to the last week of August as well. Uh, with all, all those cheery thoughts, we will begin on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer and then move to page 80. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Now, turning to page 82, we will say together the, gen the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalms. This morning, we will read Psalms 1, 2, and 3, starting on page 585, whole verse responsively. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. <coughs> Excuse me. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and his anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. <coughs> I myself have set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day have I begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling, bow down before him. Lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is kindled quickly. Happy are they all who take their refuge in him. Lord, how many adversaries I have, how many there are who rise up against me. How many there are who say of me, there is no help for him in his God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord. 
and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord. Set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A reading from the book of Job. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, Call now, is there anyone who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? Surely vexation kills the fool, and jealousy sl slays the simple. I have seen fools taking root, but suddenly I cursed their dwelling. Their children are far from safety. They are crushed in the gate, and there is no one to deliver them. The hungry eat their harvest, and they take it even out of the thorns, and the thirsty pant after their will. For misery does not come from the earth, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. But human beings are born to trouble, just as sparks fly upward. As for me, I would seek God, and to God I would commit my cause. He does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. He gives rain on the earth and sends waters on the fields. He sets on high those who are lowly, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. How happy is the one whom God reproves, Therefore, do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he wounds, but he binds up. He strikes, but his hands heal. He will deliver you from six troubles. In seven, no harm shall touch you. In famine, he will redeem you from death. And in war, from the power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue and shall not fear destruction when it comes. You shall come to your grave in ripe old age. As a shock of grain comes up to the threshing floor in its season. See, we have searched this out. It is true. Hear and know it for yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. We will say together Canticle 9, found on page 86, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, bring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed and said, Is not this the man who made havoc in Jerusalem among those who invoked this name? And has he not come here for the purpose of bringing them bound before the chief priests? Saul became increasingly more powerful and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Messiah. After some time had passed, 
The Jews plotted to kill him, but their plot became known to Saul. They were watching the gates day and night so that they might kill him. But his disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall, lowering him in a basket. When he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord, who had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up, living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. It increased in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. It's canticle 19, page 94, the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages. We can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name. For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The third lesson. A reading from the gospel according to John. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we will affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us our wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as we gather ourselves to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the, for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Ijubu North within the Church of Nigeria, for our Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, and Sean, our presiding bishop elect. For our Diocese of Maine and our Bishop Thomas. For the Congregation of St. Dunstan's in Ellsworth. For students and educators as they begin a new year. And for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed. For Sophia, Connie, the Roy family, and Pang. We offer continued prayers for Joyce, Patricia, William, Lori, Katie, Donald, Shannon, Dolores, Susan, John, Kathy, Kelly, Jenny, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in places of violence or oppression. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, for our enemies and for those who wish us harm. And we pray that all people come to realize that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to keep expanding our understanding of who our neighbors are, and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for our own nation, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world in its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, 
members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish, for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Jessica, Odie, Michael, and Mark. And we pray for the departed, for Claudette Roy, for victims of the wars in Ukraine and, the, and in the Holy Land, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we will turn to page 101 and say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Turning the page, we'll say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. We are happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us and hope that you can join us again soon, perhaps even tomorrow. In the meantime, may we all know the presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all this day. See you soon. <laughs>